And when you are cooking, it's like, because they work so hard. The, one of the unique things about the Wenatchee Youth Circus is um, it is an outdoor circus. It's not under a big top in one location. A lot of youth circuses have a place, one place that's all rigged up. It's under a tent, and they practice there, and they perform there, and you, you go to where they are. And with Wenatchee, they travel around, and these kids know what their rigging looks like. They know how to put it up. They know how to make sure it's safe. They know how to check it um, to really ensure that they're being safe up there. Um, so when you do that all sort of long, you get pretty good at it. Of course, it's checked by trainers. We have trainers and adults around. It makes it sound like it's just them. But. So I'm going to let that grow. I have it kind of on low right now. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start the tzatziki sauce on this side, if I don't get in your way there, Dave. Okay, we're going to start with, um, I love my handy little food processor. Of course, I usually make this by the Gouda Sour Cream. A lot of people make a tzatziki. You can make tzatziki with a Greek yogurt. I found it to be a little runny. Um, I love the texture that the sour cream gives it uh, and the thickness that it gives that. So my husband and I, being uh, our little motto is not just any Greek on the street, um, we kind of have had our own twist on how we do the euro. So I'm just going to peel these cubes. I'm going to get them ready to go into that uh, little food processor here. And as much as I love chopping and chopping, I'll throw those garlic in and let the food processor work its magic on them. And I usually do that first. Um, as well as some dill. I really like to chop all of these ingredients together. It makes very fresh, yummy, smelling base to our sauce here. Fresh dill is one of my favorite smells. Cucumbers can be very refreshing too, so when you put them together, it just makes for a very fresh smelling sauce. Salt, I believe, might be by you. Yep. Okay, our chicken's getting going good. I'm probably going to flip it. No marks on that. Let that keep going there. It appears chicken is a staple for uh, circuses. What are the other chefs? Ray mentioned that the only meat he could afford yeah. based on their budget. Yeah, and it depends on where, where you are and how close you are to um, getting more food. Luckily, with the youth circus, they would go on trips that are maybe for the weekend, you know, and, and they go to the fair for the weekend and perform as many times as possible. So that salt's really, um, and with, uh, parents and chaperones and cooks and trainers and we could really easily have 80 to 100 during that oh sorry go ahead and you feed everyone and we feed everyone yes yes we do during the, the home show where we would be back in Wenatchee um, there's always a, a guaranteed spaghetti night that we had to do and uh I was able to be fortunate to find through doing this, there's a red nose cookbook that's out there, an international red nose cookbook, which I had never heard of. And submitted into that cookbook was something from the Little Old Wenatchee Youth Circus, and it was Mama Guppo's spaghetti sauce. And so hearing about this recipe, I was really excited to reenact it. I was able to reenact it a little earlier today. And um, it makes a lot of sense to me because during those home shows, we would come back and we would, I mean, the kids expect spaghetti dinner. They already know what's on the menu. They know we're going to have that. We're going to have salad. We're going to have French bread, you know. And so it really stretches way back to when Mama Guppo used to make it. Now, Mama Guppo is the founder's mother. Um, Guppo was the founder's Paul Pugh's clown name. And so he was Guppo the clown and Sir and, and uh, traveled and performed with the Wenatchee Youth Circus for the first 60, 60 years, I believe. And just this last 
um, about a year and a half ago, he passed, and um, his memorial was more fun than most memorials I've ever been to, I would say. It was a lot of fun, and um, as, as he would want it, absolutely. You know, we all eat with our eyes a lot more than with our mouths, and to see the different kind of colors that can come from uh, different types of salads, not necessarily just a green salad, but uh, throw it on there. Okay, so my mixture is going into my sour cream. And you can see this is nice and thick, not, not runny. And so that'll depend. If I were to taste that, I would taste the sour cream. I would taste the cucumber, probably a little bit more of the dill. But the flavor is really in, in this right here, so you don't want to forget to add some of this back. Now when I do a full gallon, I add about a cup of this back into the full gallon. So for right now, I'm probably going to add maybe, maybe a quarter of a cup, if not a little less. And that's just, it will thin it, or excuse me, it will thicken as it goes, as it sits. That's a lot of uh, flavor right back into it. When you decided to do a food truck, how did you choose to do yields? Well, little Wenatchee, Washington doesn't have a lot of variety. <laughs> and my husband and I loved gyros, and not everybody even knew what they were. Um, it is a, a high Hispanic community to be there, so there's taco trucks on every corner almost, but, um, and they did some wonderful, authentic um, Mexican food, but as far as anything outside of that, there wasn't a lot. So there's my food. I'm going to start to do some tomatoes. And then we'll make a quick bit of bread for it. And then we'll cut up that chicken and combine our gyro all together. So yeah, so we just really did our research. I wish I could tell you we're Greek and it's my great grandmother's recipe or something, but we just really did our research as to what is authentic gyros, what is in it, how do you make those sauces, um, and we're, we weren't afraid to kind of put our own thing on it, you know, make it our own. Um, I didn't want to just copy something, you know, out of a book or, or online. I wanted to really make it, it's Chris and Beck's Euros, so that's my husband and I. And... Finish the tzatziki. Yes, so I'm just chopping up these tomatoes. Um, I'm going to throw these probably Thank right onto down. the salad. And we all, uh, I'll cut up a few more to put on our gyros. I also like, um, I have the, we made this recipe yesterday and they save every little bit, which is great. So I have some chopped onion already. The red onion is right on top of the salad here. Most of the things that are on the salad, I'll put right into the gyro as well. Love that color. Okay, we'll save a little bit for our euros. I do have another half of in there. So, yeah, and as far as colors for, um, for the circus, that's the same, same way. I, I really enjoy uh, having the kids learn what new foods there are while still having the comfort foods at home so they feel right at home. So what kind of foods do you serve at the service? Um, family style <laughs> would be how I serve it. Um, high carbohydrate, you know, a lot of protein, a lot of vegetables, a lot of color is what I try to do personally. Because they are working so hard, they're practicing nonstop, they're performing nonstop. When they're not doing that, they're setting up and tearing down for the circus. So the performers are the riggers, they're the ones who set everything up. And they are. And the way I actually use that's how it is. And um, a few of the Calamatas here. There's, like I was saying, there's a lot of youth circuses that are set up and ready to go. You're already under a tent. You know, the adults have all checked the rigging and you're safe and you're good to go. Um, but my kids are um, taught all of that stuff from, from day one. Um, if you're on the lot and you're a little one, then you can still carry a stake, or you can still drag that sledgehammer over to the guy that's about to pound it, or you can be uh, setting up the tents, or, I mean, there's a job for everyone in the circus. And so, 
When Where? Did the, when did the kids go to school? Well, as far as the, the Wenatchee Circus goes, they, they go to school, normal time, you know, from fall, spring, um, winter, like the beginning of the year, they'll start in the middle school there. They can't set up their rigging outside yet, obviously, so the things they can set up in the, in the middle school gym they do, so usually trampoline, they do a lot of uh, tumbling, and they'll hang a trapeze from the basketball hoop and practice and anything anything and everything they can get in there. And when spring happens, then we have an outside lot that they set up and um, their practices happen. They, they tend to have a lot of them because we really recognize our kids are still busy. They're still doing sports. They're still doing, um, you know, their schooling or, or what have you. So they tend to have a lot of practices and try to have focuses on each, you know, so you can schedule your life around it. You know, these aren't, they're not quite professionals yet, so we still have to let them be kids and let them do the cool stuff at school that they want. And I'm gonna throw on top there. I think over by you, there's a little foot of cheese in the bags there, awesome. All right, our chicken is minutes from done. Then I love to sprinkle right on top. Where are your children right now? They're in the big top right now. I'm so sad to be missing, but uh, they are performing right now, I believe. Um, so I have three kids. My oldest is 16, and he is a catcher in the flying trapeze. Um, my second oldest boy is 15, and he flies to him. And then my baby girl is 12, and she uh, does a lot of aerial accident as well, and is also in the flying trapeze with her with their brothers. So there's got to be very little sibling rivalry or it could be dangerous otherwise. Right. <laughs> they're pretty good about it. They're, you know, obviously they're taught to be safe and taught to be um, mindful of each other. And I'm going to flip this right over because I got Raja on it. So, um, yeah, but they do, they do really good. A spinach at the base of my euro. A little Greek chicken, a little uh, chicken, grilled chicken on top. Um, I need a spoon for the Yuki. You've got it. Thank you, sir. We form it on that big tall spit and put one on every morning and let it rotate around and be juicy and yummy. And um, that's kind of the telltale you know people come and they go does she do the real thing you know and so yeah i saw quite a bit of the, the they're just what we call our traditional gyro and i can do that traditional with chicken which is what i'm doing here um for those of you that are scared of lamb and then the food people here didn't contact me until later and um i just I really thought that I didn't have what it took to do that. I was like, I don't know. I'm not a Food Network star. I don't know if I can talk for an hour up there, you know. But when it comes down to it, I'm talking about food and my family, and I'm like, I can do that. One of the things we've learned from the various cooks here is that most circus cooks are not professional chefs. <laughs> Karen. Oh. I hope you've enjoyed this festival, and I hate to tell you this, because normally at this hour, I would be saying... I think that's it. Oh, that's beautiful. I can't even feel it. Gyro is a great food. 